Oh, uh, Lucas, just don't mind the learner driver. No. Oh, bloody learners. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> what is there, a brick wall in front of you? Before being in Kick, I've always sort of wanted to be a name of music, like in a band that makes it, not for the fact that you sort of want to be like rich and famous, but the more the fact that like, I want people to enjoy music that I've written, something of mine, like people can hold memories to like music of mine, like an emotion they could feel to music that I made is quite cool, I guess. Guitar and a band called Kick. Are you happy with this tempo? Yes, perfect. <laughs> stages. I first met Jordan about four or five years ago. We went to the same sixth form and we used to jam and stuff in the practice room. Uh, I met Phil um, a lot in the music room is where I first met him um, and that's where I mostly saw him as he studied music throughout his own levels and music tech. Um, yeah we didn't really, weren't like really close friends throughout sixth form but um, it was really after six one that we started getting closer and hanging out a lot more and sort of working together in music. Although we did jam during six form a lot, but we we were both like in different groups and stuff. But yeah. And then um, after we decided to join this competition called the XFM Songwriting Competition, which is about 2012, and um, we happened to win it, and then we decided to form a band out of that. So then. Uh, we got in contact with a guy called Rob Mead, the drummer now, and um, we found him on a website online, on like a uh, band joining forum or something like that. I met Phil and Jordan uh, after they won the XFM songwriting competition and became known as The Kicks. And they were then looking for a drummer to complete their lineup and uh, start playing live. Uh, I met the band not long ago really, but uh, I've known Phil for a few years. Uh, we didn't really know each other that well. Um, what happened was I, I heard that there was an XFM, so I decided to tune in and, and have a little listen. Uh, after giving it a listen, about a year later I actually decided to go see him play at the Crown and Treaty in Uxbridge, our local. And after the gig I, I went up to Phil and I told him that I enjoyed the set and it took him a while to, to realise who I was at first, I think. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, after that, uh, the morning after, I got a message from him basically asking if I wanted to do a tryout for the band, because he knew I played guitar. And from there on, I, I went to the tryout, and that was it. I met Lucas through Phil, actually, the first time I met Lucas when he came to a band practice. Uh, we had a member of our band leave because he was doing his own sort of musical thing, which is fair enough. Um, and then Lucas came to practice, um, and he was a really, really cool guy. He's a really good guitarist, um, sings and everything. He's like the whole, the whole thing. So he's really cool. Get along with him, and yeah, he's a good addition to the band. Really good.
Thank you. Yeah, that table's awful. This is a table at Sherry's bar. So I will put the point on the curved bit. At the moment, it looks like a normal table, but then you go down, it's very, very curved. So if you put your point on the side, you're likely to lose. So this is one I made earlier. Oh, that is skills. That's has got proof wrong. I wouldn't. No, I didn't want to drop it. <laughs> I wouldn't want to put my stuff on that table. I've seen many tables in my time. That's not a good table. Oh, cool. My ambition is to be a successful musician and playing and writing music, being a creative part of, of writing music and doing what I love. Um, and to obviously get to see the world doing it, hopefully. Um, that too. I listen to everything um, from indie rock especially to funk, Latin, um, world music and just try to be as broad as possible um, and try to put some of that influence into, into the music that we write. I particularly like discovering artists who the first time you listen to it gives you something new or a fresh approach to music and maybe think a little bit outside the box um, for example, like Radiohead or Bonobo, kind of thing that you might listen to. Alright, let's go and see. Let's go and see. I guess what uh, drives my ambition is the, the need to show people what I can do. Uh, I feel like a lot of people have uh, under, underestimated what, what I'm actually capable of, and I want to be able to show people as a band that you know we're, we're capable of a lot more than than a lot of bands would think, and a lot of other people would think. Um, you know, my my main influences come from Muse, Radiohead, Queens of Stone Age, and Pookie Vultures. Uh, so that like they're my main heroes, and to see you know how they go about their music, and how they perform on stage, is sort of what I aspire to be in a way. And I want to have people, you know, dancing and singing along to our songs and enjoying themselves and having a good time. Seriously, if I hear any more guitar, I'm going to shoot someone. <laughs> oh, whoa! Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> That's well <good. laughs> There's quite a few things that drive my ambition. Um, probably the main one is that um, I love writing music and performing it, and I'd like I like the reaction that other people give us when we play our song to them. We try, at the moment, we're trying to write quite a few dancey tunes with summer coming and everything like that. So it's great to see when people are dancing to our songs. It's, um, it's encouraging knowing that people enjoy what you're doing and that makes me want to continue doing it. The music keeps changing, which is good. Like the, It's because of the influence. The, the music of the band does keep changing. Um, and the influences are always different, like Lucas loves like Queen of Stone Age and Muse, Phil likes Queen of Stone Age and Muse, but he also loves Peace and Swim Deep. Um, and I, I love Muse as well, I love Peace, and I like, I like Swim Deep, I love the 1975, like we all link our music taste in one way, but then we always also have our own folk band. So all the sounds are really weird, like they're coming together to create this weird, different sound. Doing today? Fucking recording the best bit. <laughs> <The> drums. <laughs> it's the worst bit. 
<laughs> Can't deal with this shit. Yeah, I'll leave it off and we're, we're sick of gate on it. Get the gist. Get the gist of it. Actually, recording the EP has been quite a good experience for, for us. Um, and quite a learning curve because when we were, we were writing <clears throat> in, this, in the rehearsal rooms, we're sort of writing and, and looking at it as a performance, but it's not until you get in the studio and put it under the microscope that you see um, how things could could sound differently on a record. And also having influence of the likes of Michael Smith and Matt Thomas to, uh, to put their input in from the outside. <clears throat> and quite often it's a case of, of stripping things back and, and figuring out that less is actually more. Yeah? Really? I thought that one was better. So I, I yeah? I just wasn't sure about after the first sort of chorusy part going back in if that was tight enough. That bit I was. I resist those parts. I'm like, you know, like when you boy, yeah, yeah. Memory. muscle memory. You you like, you, yeah, you know exactly you know it's to go like, into that. Wants to go there. Oh, like, fuck. Was he like, and I bet you're double thinking it. Like, do I go there or do I not go there? Like, yeah, yeah I can imagine that. Sure, you've heard there's a ghost. No. Yeah. <laughs> Does it go, Did it go well? when the door shuts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you want to hear this all wicked noise? Ready? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the famous <laughs> <laughs> You That's want to hear it again, don't you? It's haunted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the ghost's finger. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again, I enjoyed it. Woo! I need to get into the, go straight back into the normal. Chill the fuck out, yeah. that was really good. Yeah. So I go do and do and do and do and do and do and then go into do 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 do. I'm at chorus, I just want a big fucking move. I've, I've had ideas, so I've, a couple of notes that I've made that the ideas that I want to put on the track that when we record it, we can like change things and get like other instruments, obviously that we can't play in a live set that we can get behind it, like a, uh, a new song, Sao Paulo. Um, that we could sort of get a sort of a carnival sort of band behind it, which would be really cool. Like, obviously, it'll be on the track, not on the live recording, because like, we're not we're just a small band, really. Um, but to get that sound and then put that carnival over it, over that song, would be wicked. It would completely change. Um, but, and then sort of from the studio, then you could sort of start enhancing uh, and put like new sort of instruments on you, on your set. So you could sort of like I've seen bands have sort of a shaker attached to a bit of string that then takes to the microphone stand. So all you have to do is pick up and shake it next to the microphone stand. And it's sort of a lot of ideas can come from being in the studio once it's recorded. And then once it's been recorded and put out there, the song sort of changes on the set as well, so the song's always still developing. So I'm really looking forward to co recording that EP because I think a lot of songs will, sort of new things will be added to that song, uh, to those songs, and I think they will sound pretty good to be honest. I'm looking forward to getting recording those. Over. Wearing Doc Martens, I've got wearing Doc Martens. Fucking idiot. He's wearing. He, he, oh, no, he was the one that threw your tennis ball. Yeah, it's like you're wearing socks. <laughs> uh, are you sure they're Doc Martens? Are you sure they didn't lie to you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> Primark don't sell them, mate. Yeah, I think someone's had you on. <laughs> <laughs> Do they use up the yellow bottoms? Recording the EP was uh, very different for me. Uh, I've never done anything like that. This is the first time I've actually been in a, a proper band, apart from projects. So it was it was a big change for me. And, I loved it, I loved it. I had so much fun doing it and hopefully I can carry on doing it. Right. You go. I think 
you can have a song written and in your eyes complete, but then when you go into the studio, you find all these new things that you wouldn't think to add in. Um, and as I said, little mistakes can actually turn out brilliant, and then you use them in your live set. So it was fun. I enjoyed it. I want to see people reacting to our music in a way that, that makes me perform better if I was to be in front of them playing. Uh, I want to see them you know, dancing and latching onto lyrics as we're, as we're going along. When we play it live, our new stuff, people often react well. I really hope the EP gives off the same impression that our live music does. no better feeling than they in a gig and you know, seeing everyone sort of singing and dancing along to your music um, gives you a real buzz and the feeling when you sort of get that response is sort of what you, you live for and want to get back on stage and, and do it again. People can take our music in any way they want. If they'd like it, they like it. If they don't, then I don't really care to be honest. It's something I've written, I'm not writing for anyone. I'm writing stuff that I like. Um, and if people, makes people sad, then it makes people sad. If it makes people happy, it makes people happy. Like, it's an emotion that they share with that song and hopefully it stays with them. Bands, singers, DJs, and magicians! <laughs>